Hi, and welcome back to Purple Collar Life. In today's video, we're doing something a little bit different. As you know, I like to try to do things on my own when I can, but this big maple is beyond my expertise. And it is so close to the house that we thought it's best to bring in a professional to take care of a tree like this. So I've got Mike here, he's gonna take care of this tree. I'll put his contact information down below in the description. So if you need someone to come and take care of a big tree like this that's near your house, perfect person to call. I'll put that contact info down below. Mike mentioned that most of his saws are the Husqvarna's, but for his climbing saw, he uses this little steel handheld. It does an amazing job. picked it up just this summer um, so I always had like shorter handled ones which work but uh, you only so much leverage you can get right. so I was at Saxonburg down at uh, Penn's Colony yep. you ever go down there? Yep.
know what you do if you know if your tip goes out so I mean a bar now you can get them from 60 to 90 dollars for husky bar but you can get a tip for like 25 dollars most of the time your tip goes long before you like the rails wear out as long as you you know file it maintain it but okay. anyways it's right here is a rivet and you just drill that rivet out and then that whole piece slides out huh. and then you get your new tip and it goes on there and then it, sometimes they come with a one piece rivet sometimes it's a two piece rivet but you know you just put it in there and just peen it with like a ball peen hammer yep. um, you can have it changed and you know home on your bench you can have it changed in five minutes you know but, and the tips everything from here including the sprocket yeah, and... correct sprocket everything okay and then um you know you're good to go for a third of the price you yeah know? um but yeah a lot of saw shops carry them um if they don't you can easily ask you know they can order them in for you or you can just order them online you know there's a couple good suppliers that you know that like I found stuff, but I always try to support my local yeah. saw shop as much as possible within reason. How often do you flip your bar over? Um, just depends. I keep an eye on it for wear. Um, a good way to change, like I just, I just threw the ch chain. So a good way to check it, like if you're doing the chain, is just to run your T wrench on it. Okay. See, like right there, I'm starting to get a little bit of a burr. Uh huh. So what I'll do anytime that I have to take the bar off. To like dress it up clean it whatever new chain i normally file it you know file my burrs off and, and flip my bar okay so there's really you know no particular but anytime i have the bar off i flip it mm -hmm. just for to, to keep it wearing evenly but like this tip you can even see it's starting to get like chunks out of it oh yeah yep yep and that's just from but I also keep it greased too because I was blowing a lot of tips out when I was cutting timber. But we bore cut a lot, so we're using our tip most of the time to do our cutting. Mm -hmm. And if you get your rakers a little hot, it's it, it it's hard on them, and they'll just break. So, anyways, they always come with a little grease gun, like huskies do, anyways. And um, you can grease this little in the hole here, and it has a little grease gun. I have one with me, but anyways. It keeps extra lubrication on there, and I was going through tips like crazy when I first started logging, and then I realized like why why aren't I greasing this? And yeah. once I started, I, every morning when I'd fill a saw up, I clean the air filter and grease the tip, and I started getting a lot longer wear out of the bars also. Yep. So yeah, it's probably asking a lot on a longer bar for the right. bar and chain oil to get the whole way from down at the right. end of the tip. And I always, you know, keep them cranked like like this. So you can adjust it more or less. And I normally have it like three quarter out. So it's pretty much the only time I turn it up higher is if I have the, like my Alaska mill on it and I'm milling and then I turn it up the whole way. Okay. Um, and sometimes it's not even enough oil. Um, some of the Alaska mills, you can get a little like auxiliary oiler that goes on the end to help just keep it lubricated. Yeah. So I should probably get one because the, the bar I have for on my mill, the main one, it's 48 inches. So, you know, time, like you said, time the oil yeah. gets to the end, you know, you're not getting much lubrication into, you know, your bar. Yep. <laughs> so what did you call that tool? I call it a T-Wrench, some guys call it a scrunch. Yeah, that's what I've always called it, a scrunch. See, when I first started, uh, the residential company I worked at, um, that's what they called it was a scrunch. Uh -huh. And then when I worked at Aspen for 13 years, all the guys there called them T-Wrenches, huh. or T-Tools. So I just picked up on it. But yeah, it's funny, like half the ARB community, yeah. you know, it's one thing, oh, that's a T-Wrench, that's a <laughs> scrunch, you know. It's, it's funny, you get on like forums or on different Facebook pages and you want to start arguing with a guy, like the Husky versus Steel argument. Yeah. You know, it's the same as like a T-Wrench versus Scrunch. Same tool, same concept. But yeah, it's funny. Or I'll say a guy, oh, grab me a T-Wrench. They're looking at you like, what the heck's a T-Wrench? <laughs> Uh...
So how much firewood do you think I'll get out of this maple? Definitely a cord. I I would guess, you know. Yep. I mean, you start splitting these, make wood quick. Yep. Yeah, I would definitely say a cord. What do you think? That's what I was gonna guess—a cord, maybe a cord and a half, because these big rounds make a lot of wood. What do one of your racks hold? About a, face a third cord. of a cord. So a face cord, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'd say a cord. I'd say this came down pretty good time because that limb was rotted and then I can see here in the center yeah. looks like it was starting to get bad in the middle. Yeah, it was starting to get a spot you can see, you know, yep. it was a matter of time. Yep. And I saw a funny, you can see there, uh huh. and that was um, on that front Y, so it was starting to go. Yep. And that's the limb there, you can see the, the, split. the split, that was towards your house. Yep. And then I noticed on the back lead up there, it had a funny, a funny piece. And you can see even here, right, right below that, the main Y. Yep. So, yep. yeah, definitely preventative maintenance on that one. You said you'd much rather take them down like that than once they're an emergency, right? Yeah, correct. And it definitely saves, saves uh, you know, the homeowner money also. Mm -hmm. First getting a call at 6 o'clock at night, and it's cracked and, and hanging another one, and you, you have to, you know, act on it right away. Yep. And might be out there, you know, have to get a crane in, for example, and you're paying emergency rates for it and working on your spotlights. And yep. So, yeah, it's tell people to keep an eye on your trees, you know, for sure. How far do you travel? Um, I'll go pretty much anywhere. Um, you know, like I'll go to Pittsburgh and work okay. for an hour and a half. The thing is, like, once I start getting down that way, like, a lot of times, like, I like to do jobs like this, like, you know, cut down where, you know, the homeowner has the capability of getting rid of the brush and they want the firewood. They yep. just need, you know, like a professional to get it on the ground. Something like that, I'll travel anywhere because mm -hmm. I can load up in a vehicle and, and just go. Yeah. Um, now, if, it, you know, if it starts needing equipment involved, um, I mean, I would still go to Pittsburgh for the, you know, the right job. Um, it just starts getting hard with like logistics, like getting rid of brush or getting rid of the chips, um, getting rid of the wood, like once you start getting out of your yep. service area. Yep. But like our main service area is like, like I'm out of Parker, so like the Cook's Forest, Butler, uh, Grove City, Slippery Rock, you know, like that, you know. This, yep. I guess it's a four county area, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's what we pretty much service up into, you know, Franklin, Oil City. I've went to Titusville and worked before, so.
little pine tree survived somehow. Yeah. I don't even know how it got back here in the woods. It'll make a nice little tree for sure. Yeah. A little spruce. 362, the 365, and the 372 huskies are all pretty much interchangeable. Okay. Um, the 372 is like their good saw. But anyways, so it's a 362, but it has a 365 carb on it. Um, and it's just been a great saw. It just won't die. So if you replace the tip on that one, is that why the tip's black? Yes, yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, it's a husky bar and that. And you can see, uh, and you can see the rivet. Yep. This one was a uh, one, this was a two piece rivet. Okay. So yeah, no, this is like I said, it's my favorite, probably my favorite little saw. I did a little exhaust cord on it and let her breathe a little bit more and it rips. Needs touched up a hair, but got the job done. It's a good one. Yeah, good stuff. Well, there are some jobs like this one that are just way better left to the professionals. Mike knew what he was doing, made sure that the maple tree didn't fall against the house, the water well, the weeping cherry, and then back there by the shed, that tree was really leaning at the shed. He did a great job of cranking it up and making sure it didn't hit the shed or anything behind the shed. So we really appreciate his expertise. Again. I'll leave his information down in the description that'll help you out if you're in the western Pennsylvania or northwestern Pennsylvania area looking for someone to take care of trees that you need taken down before they become a problem. Thanks for watching. If this video entertained or informed you in any way, please give us a thumbs up. We'll see you again the next time. I will say it was nice to have the whole day today to spend with Mike to talk about chainsaws, firewood, sharpening chains, places to have your chainsaws worked on really a wealth of knowledge when you talk to someone who professionally cuts up wood uh, for a living. So it was really, really cool to talk with Mike today about those topics that I enjoy as a hobby and he knows all about as a profession. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again the next time.